His four-year-old chestnut gelding jurisdiction took out the 1,200-metre race in a close finish. Lord, at the 300, Elsa Reed jurisdiction and West Mayo fighting it out from Mr Magic. Regal advice running on. It's Elsa Reed and jurisdiction together with 100 to go. Jurisdiction on the inside just got his head in front of Elsa Reed. It's going to be close. Oh, nearly a dead heat. Jurisdiction and Elsa Reed. Uh, West Mayo is third. Jurisdiction got the nod by a short half head, giving apprentice Michael Barlow a riding double today. Jurisdiction started favourite at 7 to 2, second El Sari at 10 to 1, and third West Mayo at 13 to 2. The second leg of the double was a real heart stopper between the favourite Taj Quillo and Mighty Remington. Remington is coming at them on the outside and starting to finish on pretty well, Lord of the Vale. And uh, let's see, it's Taj Quillo getting to the lead now from Mighty Remington. They're going to fight it out. Mighty Remington's getting to Taj Quillo. There's nothing in it. They hit the line. A bobbing finish, Taj Quillo or Mighty Remington. Uh, they've hit it absolutely locked together as they went over the line. Arishka might have got up for third back behind them. After the developed print, Mighty Remington, ridden by Malcolm Pay, got the nod starting at 5 to 1. Taj Quillo, the 4 to 1 favourite, was second, and Irishka, third, at 12 to 1. The Caulfield Daily Double for five jurisdiction and six Mighty Remington paid $16.85. The Quadrella combination of two, five, one, and six returned $188.75. Tomorrow they race at Mooney Valley and Bert Bryant looks to race six for his nap bet. Horse number three, Red Opaque, to be ridden by Len Maund, is Bert's selection. That's race six, horse three, Red Opaque. And Peter, that's all in sport for tonight. Thank you, Mitch. Welcome back, by the way. Thank you. Next, Anne Snell with the weather and the canoeists. Meeting apprentice jockey Warren Stevens died when he came off his horse Feltage during race three on the program. It's believed one horse fell in front of Stevens' mount, forcing him to tumble. The race and the Boxing Day meeting continued uninterrupted and a steward's inquiry has been called into the accident. Meanwhile, they raced at Caulfield today and it was a meeting dominated by the apprentice jockeys. It was a good day for the punters with three favourites successful and Michael Barlow took the riding honours with a double. In race five, the first leg of the quadrilla and it was the stablemates Follow the Light and Ankara who punters thought would battle it out at the finish. On the turn now and follow the light as race to the lead but Wakefield Tower tackles him quickly. Two lengths to poach and Ella into the clear and they're followed by Ankara struggling on. 200 to go, Wakefield Tower's got to the lead, Poach and Ella's grabbed her in one stride. He's raced to the lead, Poach and Ella now coming right away from Wakefield Tower and then came follow the light. But Poach and Ella's going to bolt in, wins by three lengths to Wakefield Tower. A neck away third, follow the light and then stops. Well, Pochinella at 11 to 2, winning easily there by three and a half lengths from Wakefield, Wakefield Tower and follow the light, managed third. Now to race six, the Christmas handicap, and there were plenty of chances, but it was Jurisdiction who finally started favourite. Outside fence as they swing for home, into the straight, and Jurisdiction got up on the inside to go to the lead with Al Sari and then West Mayo. They're followed by Mr Magic, and further back in the field, Chesterfield, Regal Advice is struggling, so's Regal Lord. It's Al Sari and Jurisdiction in front with 150 to go, West Mayo closing. Here's old Mr Magic coming home well. It's Al Sari and Jurisdiction fighting back on the inside. Jurisdiction doing better they hit it nothing between jurisdiction and El Sari nearly a dead heat a thrilling finish there with jurisdiction just hanging on to score from El Sari and West Mayo battle on for third in race seven, the top weight, Faristan, was the warm favourite, but there was a lot of money for on our selection. Four wide and being pushed out, then on our selection, dropping out of it as they straighten up now. Expectations tackled by Raj, put out wide, and Lord Bard in the middle. Faristan coming at them, four wide. The big weight not stopping him, he's taken the lead from Raj, put. Then came Mighty Dom, it's Faristan in front. He's a neck in front, showing courage, he comes away. Faristan wins, Faristan first, Mighty Dom flesh through, might have got second. And Good result there for the punters with Faristan scoring well from Mighty Dom which was a good run and Raj Put getting the money for third. Now to the last leg of the quaddy and there was about five chances in this one and punters finally decided to make Taj Quillo the four to one favourite. Taj Quillo finishing well on the outside then Mighty Remington they're followed by good old days and Ariska late down the outside Taj Quillo in front of the hundred over a length in front of Mighty Remington starting to peg him back Taj Quillo three quarters Mighty Remington going home better Taj Quillo and Nick in front Mighty Remington lunge couldn't pick it again. Mighty Remington and on the... Well, Malcolm Pay ended the apprentice's domination at Caulfield today with a win on the 5-1 to one chance, Mighty Remington. The favourite Taj Quillo finished a close second. Now the quadrilla and for the numbers 2, 5, 1 and 6, you received $188.75. The daily double for 5 and 6 paid $16.85 and the extra double for a pair of 2s 
paid $21.65. And tomorrow they race at Mooney Valley where there's an eight event card starting at the normal time. Let's see if we can find some winners for you for the quadrilla. We suggest the numbers one, three, four and one. The daily double, three, two and six in the first leg into one, two and six. The extra double, one, five and two into one, four and ten. And the lucky long shot, you won't get a huge odds, but might be worth having an each-way bet on horse number 10 in race four, Ryko. And now it's back to Rob Mundell, who's standing by in the Sydney Race Control Centre, and uh, he's just sent this report on the yacht's placings. Apprentices, they won seven of the nine races. The highlight was a double, the young M. Barlow riding for Angus Armanasco. Let's look at the day's results, and in the first, a good win to the barlow Armanasco combination. La Zip, Pretty Plume and Rory's Twig. Recall Lacey, Sabinella won the second, but he was in Perth with a mystic monarch for today's Australian Derby. The third race, 11 to 2, 6 to 1 and 2 to 1 favourite. The fourth, a one and a quarter length win to Yippie Yai Yates. The trifecta, $70.95 and Duke's Riesling, the favourite, 11 to 4. The fifth, the first leg of the quadrilla and this was to be a runaway win. On the turn they race now with about 500 to go and follow the light and Wakefield Tower went up quickly to Navajo Tradition. Pochinella trying to get out from behind them as they swing into the straight. Follow the light and Wakefield Tower together from Pochinella the outside followed by top right and further back stop snoozing. Wakefield Tower took the lead but Pochinella's grabbed it in a stride on the outside. It sweeps to the lead Pochinella from Wakefield Tower follow the light and a good gap away came Ankara but Pochinella's going to win by a street. Goes down to score by three and a half lengths to Wakefield Tower. Ahead to follow the light third. Great win to Pochinella at 11 to 2, paying $3.95 and $1.15, trained by Wayne Walters. In the second leg, race six and the Armanasco Barlow combination were aiming for their double on jurisdiction. Mission Reds put himself out of a jurisdiction. The leader with El Sari and West Mayo from Mr Magic as they straighten up. Looking for a run behind them too is Chesterfield and then came Torval on the outside followed further back by Kentish and Regal Lord. At the 300 El Sari jurisdiction and West Mayo fighting it out from Mr Magic. Regal advice running on. It's El Sari and jurisdiction together with 100 to go. Jurisdiction on the inside just got his head in front of El Sari. It's going to be close. Oh, nearly a dead heat. Jurisdiction and El Sari. Uh, West Mayo is third. The Christmas handicap to the favourite jurisdiction and a nice present for Angus. In the third leg, the apprentices were looking for their seventh win on end. It's Rajput getting to the lead, but Faristan's gobbling them up and Mighty Dom trying to get a run. Faristan took the lead from Rajput, Mighty Dom and getting in between them now. Faristan in front near the line and Faristan's going to win it about a neck. Mighty Dom might have got second and unlucky with Rajput, the other one in the photo for second. Tight finish as Bill called it. Apprentice Craig did on Faristan successful at six to four. The Quinella there paying six dollars seventy-five. Race eight, the last leg of the quadrilla, and a real heart stopper it proved to be. Mighty Remington is coming at them on the outside and starting to finish on pretty well. Lord of the Vale, and uh, let's see, it's Taj Quillo getting to the lead now from Mighty Remington. They're going to fight it out. Mighty Remington's getting to Taj Quillo. There's nothing in it. They hit the line. A bobbing finish. Taj Quillo or Mighty Remington. Uh, they've hit it absolutely locked together as they went over the line. Arishka might have got up for third. Arishka did jump up for third and the camera separated them with Mighty Remington at five to one getting the result from Taj Quillo at four to one. And the last lots of ice at sevens from Ollie's Decree and Lighthouse Watson. The unplaced favourites at four to one, Educate and Colenza, the only unplaced favourites of the day. Let's check the other major TAB information starting with the extra double, $21.65 for a pair of twos. The daily double, five and six, $16.85. The quadrilla in Melbourne, two, five, one and six, not bad value at $188.75. In Sydney, the extra double, $31.40 for seven and 13. The main double in Sydney, six and three, $101.60. Over to Morfordville in South Australia, $51.80 for 13 and seven. The main double there, eight and three, $27.95. And uh, a pretty tough day of racing all round with those apprentices winning seven of the nine races and doing it very well indeed. Don't forget the Australian Derby at 7.30, live on the 7. And Mel, for today, that's all in racing. Thank you, Stephen. Malcolm Gray is a little off colour tonight, with no pun intended. So Tom Bennett will have the weather details right after this break. Today's Christmas Handicap Day at Caulfield, winning seven races. Michael Barlow was the pin-up boy with a double, both his winners starting favourite. To the first, and La Zip was sent out favourite at five to two. 
under the whip now coming home fairly is Pretty Plume but Lazip kicked away 150 out opened up about two and a half lengths to Pretty Plume and then Rory Twig on the outside but Lazip's going to bolt in Lazip's found her right form to race away and win by four lengths second is Pretty Plume a half in front of Rory's Twig then came Miss Me Blind Lazip appreciated the firmer going today to win by five lengths in race two Golden Trees was nine to four whip from Century Waltz, then Sabinella over on the inside and they're followed by Asset Test uh, with a hundred to go, Golden Trees getting a bit tight now, Sabinella and Century Waltz getting to her, she's finding a bit Golden Trees, Sabinella's got out of the pocket, grabbed her and Sabinella got up to win by a half Golden Trees, third is the tiring Century Waltz and then Sandown. First up since August, Sabinella blasted putters out of the race beating the favourite, in the third Lock Arbor Lass was twos and popular way self-respect there's many chances at the 200 Suraquay a length in front of Gala Wish La Carbalas under the whip Maybell miss on the fence Suraquay finding plenty a hundred to go she's over a length in front holding them all at bay and Suraquay ever consistent goes on to win by a length and a quarter Portray half a length La Carbalas third in a photo from Portray doesn't know how to run a bad race Suraquay got the prize at 11 to 2 today in race four this was the first leg of a Bart Cummings double Still standing, then Yippee I Yates running on fairly from Duke's reasoning. 150 out, better value over a length in front. Yippee I Yates is the danger, it's flying home on the outside, and then Duke's reasoning. Yippee I Yates has taken the lead and comes away to win. Yippee I Yates by a length and a quarter. Duke's reasoning, better value third. They're followed in by Yippee I Yates, first up since July, out sprinted them to win easily at six to one. Follow the light, favourite in race five. Struggling on, 200 to go, Wakefield Towers got to the lead, Pochinella's grabbed her in one stride, he's raced to the lead, Pochinella now, coming right away from Wakefield Tower and then came follow the light, but Pochinella's going to bolt in, wins by three links to Wakefield Tower, a neck away third, follow the light and then stop snoozing anchor. Well, Waits didn't bother Pochinella, he won by three and a half lengths in fast time, now the Christmas handicap and a top finish. The struggling, so's Regal Lord. It's El Serian jurisdiction in front with 150 to go. West Mayo closing. Here's old Mr. Magic coming home well. It's the El Serian jurisdiction fighting back on the inside. Jurisdiction doing better. They hit it. Nothing between jurisdiction and El Serian, nearly a dead heap. Third might be West Mayo. They're followed in behind them. A short half head win to jurisdiction in race six, completing the double for Michael Barlow. In the seventh, Faristan, the shortest price favourite all day. Lord Bard in the middle, Faristan coming at them four wide, the big weight not stopping him, he's taken the lead from Rajput, then came Mighty Dom, it's Faristan in front, he's a neck in front, showing courage, he comes away, Faristan wins, Faristan first, Mighty Dom flashed through, might have got second a nose in front of Rajput, then came big... Top effort from Faristan under 58 kilos, so seven races down, seven apprentice wins, Malcolm Pay changed all that in race eight. They're followed by good old days, Ender Rishka late down the outside, Taj Quillo in front of the 100, over a length in front of Mighty Remington starting to peg him back, Taj Quillo three quarters, Mighty Remington going home better, Taj Quillo and Nick in front, Mighty Remington lunge, couldn't pick it again, Mighty Remington and on the inside Taj Quillo, nothing between them, uh, Iriska may have run third with Mighty Duke. Another short half head decision that time going in favour of Mighty Remington at five to one. In the last, Colenza and Educate equal favourites. Three lengths for effective. Ollie's decree and Lighthouse Watson trying to get the lots of ice. Lots of ice two in front of the Lighthouse Watson finishing better and then Ollie's decree the outside but lots of ice in front and lots of ice wins. A length and a half Ollie's decree and third Lighthouse Watson then Rosh and... Lots of ice broke clear with a winning lead on the turn and held on nicely to defeat Ollie's decree and Lighthouse Watson. Today's quadrilla at Caulfield, 2, 5, 1 and 6, 188.75. The double 5 and 6, 16.85. Extra a pair of twos paid 21.65. The Sydney double, 6 and 3, 101.60. Extra 7 and 13, 31.40. In Adelaide, 8 and 3 return 27.95. Extra 13 and 7, $51.80. At Geelong, the quadrilla, 535.95. The double for a pair of threes, 12.70. And the extra returning $43.15. It's been a good day for Australians at Kuyong with four local players winning through to the quarterfinals at the Victorian Open. The successful Australians were Peter Doohan, Brod Dyke, Mark Kratzman and Mark Edmondson. Brad Druitt started off strongly in his match against Peter Doohan. Yes. 
but Doohan took the first set easily 6-2. Druitt fought back in the second set, winning it on the tiebreaker. A clever Game shot for the set. set the third set was also close, but Doohan finally broke serve in the last game to take the set 7-5. Oh, that is the match, and a great game shot by Doohan to finish match. it off. Mark Edmondson had a much easier match against Michael Schaefer's of the Netherlands. And a little bit of luck game gives Mark set, Edmondson the first set. It wasn't until the final game of the match that Schaefer's was even able to get to deuce on Edmondson's serve. But the Australian then served out yeah. to take the match, 6-4, 6-2. He's won it now, and he'll be pretty pleased point. about it. Doohan beat Druitt in three sets. In other matches, Mark Kratzman defeated South African Christo Stein, and Mark Edmondson had a comfortable win over Dutchman Mike Schaefer's. And that's all in sport. Now, Edwin, with the weather. Thank you, Greg. Well, our weather seems to be caught in a web that hasn't changed much in the past few days and isn't likely to in the next. There have been isolated light showers in southern and mountain districts today, plenty of cloud and temperatures up to six degrees below average. Well, let's see how the rest of the nation is doing and even Hobart beat Melbourne in the Mercury Stakes today. The Mercury Stakes, you like that, Greg? Like and that. Darwin soaked up 16 millimetres of rain. Now, tomorrow, showers are expected in Darwin and Hobart with a late storm likely in Brisbane. Temperatures in our region were similar to yesterday's and you'll no doubt recognise your district there, but you'll have to be quick. At the extremes, Coryong had a maximum of 31 and at the other end of the scale, Mount Hotham scored 14. Melbourne's top was 20 today. Now, the satellite chart is fairly clear, but you can see cloud associated with the cold front over the Tasman Sea and a low to the south of Tasmania. The noon chart shows those systems and when the front moved through overnight and this morning it brought more rain and showers to many districts. Tomorrow morning the high over Western Australia should crawl further east bringing warmer conditions on Saturday. However that cold front approaching the bite is expected to provide a weak change on Sunday. Southern New South Wales will be fine and mild with a moderate southerly wind. Victoria scattered showers on and south of the ranges, fine north of the divide cool to mild with a southwesterly wind, fresh to strong near the coast. Moderate sea rising to rough in the east, the fire danger is high in the Mallee. The regional centres will have a similar day to today with temperatures close to the December average. A strong wind warning is current for Victorian coastal waters east of Wilson's Promontory. Port Phillip and Western Port Bays, southwest wind of 15 to 20 knots with a choppy to rather rough sea. Melbourne, a shower or two, but mostly fine, cool and partly cloudy with a moderate southwest wind, an overnight low of 13 and a top of 20 degrees. Now let's have a look at the extended outlook, and Saturday will be fine and becoming warmer, but Sunday a cooler change with a few showers developing, and Monday a shower or two, but mainly fine. Now reviewing the main news and...